Yo, what's going on guys? Uh, it's Noah here breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings and Yahoo for Saturday, uh, November the 9th. We're going to take a first look at the Saturday night slate. Just four games today, which is pretty surprising. Um, we usually have more than four games on Saturday nights. It's usually at least like six or seven games. Uh, but just a four, uh, four gamer today. We're going to go through each position. I'll hit on some plays that I see at each position the night before uh, that really catch my eye. And then as we go, we will build out a core of five players. Uh, these are five guys that I like specifically for DraftKings and then specifically for Yahoo. We will touch on both sites. Um, but before we do get started, guys, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like on the video down below. Uh, definitely would appreciate it. Also, make sure you click that subscribe button if you have not already. I'm uploading NBA videos daily, I'm trying to get out as many NBA videos a week as I can, usually Monday through Saturday. I usually don't upload NBA videos on Sundays, especially when NFL is going on. But when NFL season is over, I'll try and get out NBA videos uh, every day of the week if possible so I got a ton of content coming out for you guys would definitely appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button uh, be sure to click the notification bell as well so that way you get notified every time I upload and if you have not already make sure you follow me on Twitter at DFS by Noah uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at this slate start off at point guard so our most expensive point guard today is James Harden he's also the most expensive player on the slate at 11,800 the next most expensive player on the slate is Luka Doncic at 9,600 so pretty much all our studs today are coming from the point guard position. All of the top four guys on DraftKings in terms of price are all point guard eligible. So this is probably a position we're going to be looking to spend up at today. James Harden at 11800 his price is finally to a point where you do have to ask yourself, is he worth that salary? I think he is. I mean, Harden is a 12K player most nights. Playing alongside Russell Westbrook has not hurt him at all this season. When he was like 10100 to 10,800 like all those nights it was just plug and play Harden now that he's 11-8 I think it's a bit of a question as to do you pay up for him on the slate especially because you have Luka Doncic for 2,200 less you got Russell Westbrook for almost $3,000 less I don't think Harden's going to be a core play for me obviously he has probably the highest ceiling and highest floor of any player on this slate if you can find a way to fit him in I definitely like doing that but I don't think I'm going to be prioritizing him at 11-8 uh, I really like this spot for Luka Doncic, and I like the savings you get going down to Luka. I feel like he's going to be a core play for me come Saturday night. 9,600 here uh, on the road against the Grizzlies. Normally, we would see this matchup against the Grizzlies and would shy away, but this is just a totally different uh, Grizzlies team. We look at pace so far this season. Right now, the Grizzlies rank fifth in pace, so they are playing extremely fast this season. And it makes sense with John Moran at point guard. They're looking to push the ball. They have a pretty young team. Uh, so I think Luka, or just in general, this is a pace-up spot for Luka, pace-up spot for the Mavericks. Mavericks, uh, Mavericks are usually not a fast-paced team. They're all the way down here at 22nd. So pace-up spot, Luka's just such a great player. I mean, this dude has triple-double upside every time he touches the floor. Pretty sure he put up a triple-double on Friday night. The Mavericks are on a back-to-back, -back, which I guess is maybe concerning. But this early on in the season, I mean, Luka should be ready to play 36, 38 minutes a night if he has to. And... This is a game that should be competitive, should be high scoring. Uh, obviously, facing the Grizzlies is great for um, Luka. And if we just look at his usage this season as well, it's pretty insane. So far this season, you look at usage, this, just the top two players with a decent sample size. You do have Boban and J.J. Barea down there with a 28 and 25% usage rate, but those guys don't play that much. I mean, Boban's only played 27 minutes this season. Uh, J.J. Barea, 15 minutes. At the top, though, with Luka and Porzingis, Luka in 250 minutes this season has a 32.1% usage rate, 1.54 fantasy points per minute. Chris Stabbs, tw uh, 227 minutes this season, 26.6% usage rate, 1.16 fantasy points per minute. So Luka and Porzingis are doing everything for this uh, Mavericks team so far this season. I love Luka on the slate. He's my top point guard on Yahoo as well. He's $1 less than Russell Westbrook, and I think he's just a better play overall. He should not be cheaper than Westbrook. Uh, you do have Westbrook for cheaper, though, on DraftKings. Westbrook's at 9K. I do like this price on Westbrook a lot. Uh, he's had two pretty disappointing games the last two games. I was very high on him in that game against the Warriors. I played him in my main lineup. He wasn't that great, just uh, 40 DraftKings points in 30 minutes. He did come out of that game early because of an injury. Uh, he did get injured, but he, it seems he's fine to go for this game. He was close to a triple-double. It was like six minutes left in the fourth quarter. Westbrook was two rebounds and four assists shy of a triple double and then he got hurt so that was kind of frustrating I thought he would have had a chance at the triple double if he could have continued to play Westbrook at 9k is a solid play today but I would definitely rank him behind Luka and honestly if you can find the salary to get up to Harden 
Harden's probably the better play, uh, even for two two 2,800 more. Uh, but I don't mind dropping down to Westbrook if you need to. Um, then you have D'Angelo Russell at 8,500. It's hard for me to play Russell on this slate uh, with the Warriors on a back-to-back. He did have a monster game on Friday night. As I'm recording this on Friday night, that Timberwolves-Warriors game just ended, and Russell or Russell went for like 50 real-life points, had like 70 or 80 DraftKings points. He had a monster game. He played a ton of minutes Friday night. With it being a back-to-back, I guess that's a bit concerning. At 8,500, it's pretty tough for me to get to him on DraftKings. If we do go over to Yahoo, though, D'Angelo Russell is all the way down there at $35. Just comparing his price to Luka's, he is $12 less than Luka. I think Russell is going to be a core play for me, even at $35. Uh, I want to see if they've updated the... Yeah, so Yahoo has updated the game log. 82 fantasy points Friday night for Russell against Minnesota. That game did go to overtime. He played 40 minutes, 52 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals, 2 blocks. Uh, it was a monster game from him. If you wanted to win a tournament Friday night, you had to have D'Angelo Russell Pretty much had to have Andrew Wiggins as well because both those guys went uh, nuclear in that game. But Russell, I think, is a very strong play on Yahoo at $35. Definitely want to keep up to date with like news on Saturday. I would not be surprised if they rest Russell. I mean, after playing 40 minutes on a back-to-back, he is coming back from injury. But assuming he's full go and he's ready to play, I mean, Russell at that price on Yahoo's for sure in play. On DraftKings, though, with just the $500 more, I probably would rather get to uh, Westbrook for $500 more. But let's talk about some of these other point guards in this mid-range. Really good spot for SGA. I do like SGA a lot here against this terrible Warriors defense. I think it's 7,100. He's my preferred option in that 7K range. You got four guys in that 7K range, and I think I would definitely go to SGA between those four guys. Terry Rozier is also in a great spot, but Rozier's just been so inconsistent this season. He's losing a lot of minutes to Devontae Graham, who's been playing extremely well. Devontae Graham at 6,700. I don't have a ton of interest in on DraftKings. I mean, the guy has shown plenty of upside this season. At 6700 though, for him to be worth this price tag, you're going to need him to put up probably 40 DraftKings points, which he definitely has the potential to do. I mean, he's done that twice so far this season. I think, though, on Yahoo, where I, that's where I want to get my exposure to Devontae Graham because he's $20 over here, and that's just severely underpriced. Uh, he is for sure going to be a core play for me over on Yahoo at that salary. That's probably where I'll be playing Devontae Graham today. At 6,700 on DK, honestly think I could look elsewhere. Unless I'm just like stacking that game, uh, I probably won't be going to Graham in my main lineup, especially at that salary. So maybe looking for value at point guard. Dennis Schroeder, I think at 5,600, is a guy you could look to against the Warriors. Uh, He's just been pretty consistent this season, giving you 25 to 30 DraftKings points most nights. He's shown a little bit of an upside this season. He went for 48 earlier this year against the Warriors in only 25 minutes. I uh, do like Schroeder quite a bit at 5,600, and he's definitely a guy you could look to in that price range. Uh, Alec Burks, I expect to see plenty of run off the bench for the Warriors. I think he closed out the game uh, on uh, Friday in that game against Minnesota. He did close out that game. He played a ton of minutes. He's going to continue to see pretty big minutes every night. Uh, so I do like Burks at 4,500 if you're looking for a cheap value. But I think that's probably it for value plays at point guard. Moving on to shooting guard, let's just look at some plays I haven't talked about. Not really much I see that catches my eye besides a cheap value that I want to talk about. Uh, so if we go all the way down here to 3,200, we do have an injury uh, to break down for today. Oh, I don't think he's 30, or he's, he's not 3,200. Yeah, he's, he is 3,200, but he's at small forward, so that's my mistake. We'll talk about him when we get to small forward. You guys probably know who I'm talking about. So just looking for other shooting guard value plays under 5K. There really isn't much. I mean, uh, Dwayne Bacon was someone I played last slate in my main lineup, and he was very disappointing against the Celtics. Only 21 minutes, 17 DraftKings points. Dwayne Bacon's just going to be a a risky play every night. If he's hitting his shots and he's playing well, there's a chance he gets 35, 36 minutes. If he's not hitting his shots and not playing well, he probably only plays like 20, 25 minutes. So he's going to be a very frustrating player to roster. But this is a great spot for the Hornets getting to face the Pelicans. Uh, we go back to the pace stats. Pelicans are top 10 in pace this season. Right now, they're ranked 6th. They're pretty bad in defensive rating as well. I'm pretty sure they're bottom in the league in defensive rating. So it's a really good spot for Dwayne Bacon. In uh, cash games, he's for sure going to be a guy to avoid. He's just too risky right now, even at 4,400. For tournaments, though, if you want to take a shot on him, honestly wouldn't mind it. But in my main lineup, I don't think I'd, he'd be somewhere I'd go. So let's go ahead and move on to small forward now. Quickly run down this position. Uh, so it's small four, just a couple players that stand out to me. You got Brandon Ingram at the top for 8K. I don't think Ingram's going to be someone I pay up for today. 
I think small forward is a position that I like some value here. I do want to talk about that really cheap value play at 3,200. Uh, that's Chandler Hutchinson, small forward and power forward eligible. Uh, so we have already gotten the news that Otto Porter is going to be out today for the Bulls, and Chandler Hutchinson is expected to start. Honestly, don't know what to expect from him. Just two or uh, two games this season so far that he's played in, 15 and 19 minutes off the bench, 8 and 15 DraftKings points. He is coming back from injury, it seems. I don't know if he's going to be limited. I mean, since he's starting, I would imagine that he's not limited. At 3,200, even if he gets you 15 DraftKings points, that's really not going to kill you at this salary. Getting players on DraftKings that are like 3,200, 3,400, it's just so rare to get guys that cheap that project for 20-plus minutes or 20-plus DraftKings points, and I think Hutchinson does today. It's a pace-up spot as well. Uh, so far this season, the Rockets are second in pace right behind the Timberwolves, so pace-up spot for the Bulls. Really like Hutchinson here as a value. He's probably going to be pretty popular today, uh, but for good reason. He's cheap on DraftKings. He's cheap on Yahoo as well. He's minimum salary over here. Uh, definitely going to be a guy I look to quite a bit over on Yahoo. Might be risky because we don't know what we're going to get from him, but I mean, at 3200 I've said this so many times this season. I, anytime I'm looking to roster like a $3,200 player, even if they get you 15, 18 DraftKings points, especially for cash games, I think you just take those players in your lineup and then just jam in the studs. That's kind of how cash games have been this season. Seems like there always is, is guys, or there always are, always are guys 4K and below on DraftKings that are going to play 25, 30 minutes. You just jam those guys into your cash games and you pay up for the studs that give you the 70, 80 point upside. Uh, we kind of saw it Friday night with Raul Neto. Uh, as I'm recording this Friday night, I think he has like 16 DraftKings points entering the fourth quarter. And really at that salary that he was on Friday, 3,400, he's really not killing you with 16 DK points. I feel like the same thing is going to be said for Hutchinson today. I don't think he's going to go for 40 DK points, but even if he gets you 15 to 20, that's really not hurting you at his salary. Uh, so we pretty much covered all the small forward plays I like. I mean, I feel like I'm going to be playing Hutchinson here mostly. I guess in this mid-range, you got guys like Mikael Bridges, or Miles Bridges, excuse me, at 6,100, pace-up spot against the Pelicans. Gallinari facing the Warriors is in a really good matchup. Uh, maybe like P.J. Tucker. I mean, 5,800 for P.J. Tucker seems incredibly overpriced, but the dude's actually been really good this season. He's shown plenty of upside. I probably would just play, uh, rather play Tomas Sadaransky. Sadaransky actually does see a bump in usage. Let's pull up the Bulls usage real quick with Otto Porter off the floor because there are a couple guys that will benefit. Uh, once I get it to pull up, I'll show you guys if I can find Otto Porter here. So pulling up hit, uh, t or taking Otto, Otto Porter off the floor, pulling up the Bulls usage. A couple guys see uh, benefits. One of the biggest ones has been um, Markinen, 25.7% usage rate, 1.07 points per minute. That's a 3.2% uh, bump in usage. Tomas Sadoransky sees a plus 2.7% bump in usage with Otto Porter off the floor, averages 0.25 fantasy points more per minute. So Sadoransky actually sees a pretty nice bump with Otto Porter off the floor. Could be someone you look to. DraftKings really bumped up his price, though, after a big game against the Hawks. He's now up to 5,700. Uh, one thing that's very interesting, though, is that Sadoransky has point guard and small forward eligibility, so you've got a lot of flexibility with your roster if you do want to go to him. He honestly would probably be my preferred option in that mid-range if you're not saving with Hutchinson, but I feel like saving with Hutchinson is probably going to be the way to go at small forward today. Uh, so power forward, just looking at this position, I think Laurie Markin at 6,300 is the guy I want to talk about. I really like him on DraftKings today. His price has really started to drop. Uh, he hasn't really been that great this season. He had that like big game op opening night against the Hornets, 34 minutes, 62 DraftKings points. Since then, he has really not done much. His best game was last game against the Hawks, where he went for 36 DraftKings points. Now we get him in a pace-up spot against the Rockets without Otto Porter. He does see a slight bump in usage without Otto Porter. I really like marketing today at 6,300. If you want to target him on Yahoo, I think he's a really good player over here as well. Uh, he's $24 at power forward. I'm not going to include him in my five plays because uh, there's a guy at center that I really like on Yahoo, but definitely would have had exposure to marketing if I was playing multiple lineups on Yahoo. Uh, but on DraftKings, really like him at 6,300. I, I really just like him overall on both sides today. I think he's going to have a pretty solid game. Auto Porter being out does help him a little bit. Uh, so he's probably my favorite power forward play. Looking for value, there's not much I see. Jaron Jackson is incredibly cheap, but he just really hasn't done much this season. Seems like the guy's always in foul trouble. Always, I mean, 5, 3, 6, 5, 4. The dude's always in foul trouble. That's why he doesn't get the minutes that he should. If he can stay out of foul trouble and get 30-plus minutes, he would be a good play most nights, but it's just so hard to predict that. I guess you could take a shot on him at power forward if you wanted to go there.
But that's probably it for this position. I mean, I mainly like Markin in here. You can play Hutchinson here. I probably won't be playing uh, or paying up for Ingram or Porzingis on the slate. They don't feel like core plays for me. Maybe Gallinari in that mid-range, but this position overall is just pretty gross. Small forward and power forward are just pretty gross today. I mean, there's a lot of good options at point guard. Like, you got Harden, Westbrook, Russell, Doncic, uh, SGA that you could go to, Devontae Graham. Then you get to small forward, and it's just like Miles Bridges, Dylan Brooks, P.J. Tucker. It's pretty gross. So, honestly, just saving at these positions probably is the way to go today. But now we're going to talk about some center plays that I like uh, before we close out the video. Uh, so just looking at the center position, I think there's a couple guys that really stand out on DraftKings. So you have Clint Capella at 7,400 coming off a really big game last game. Uh, this is a great spot for him facing the Bulls. The Bulls have been one of the worst rebounding teams so far this season. I uh, really like Capella today. If we go over to Yahoo and look at his salary over here, he's at $28. Joe Val's at $20. I think it's very close between those two guys on who, who to roll with at center. I think I'm going to lean Capella just because I like that matchup so much. Also, we haven't seen Joval play big minutes this season. It is a back-to-back -back for Memphis. They did play on Friday night. Uh, it was a blowout against the Magic on Friday night. He only played 22 minutes. So, I mean, if he's fully or if he's able to go today, which he should be able to, even though it's a back-to-back, -back, he's probably going to play mid to upper 20s in minutes until we see Joval eclipse 30 minutes. Even at $20 on Yahoo, it's going to be hard to play him today when you have Capella at 28. So, Capella is going to be a core play for me on Yahoo. On DraftKings as well, even at 7,400, even though he seems really expensive. I just love the matchup here against this Bulls team. Uh, Bulls have been terrible on the glass. Capella, we know, is a guy that can go out there and get you almost 20 rebounds if he really wants to. So, I uh, love Capella at 7,400. Other center plays, there's definitely some guys I want to talk about in this 5K range. Uh, so, two guys at 5,400, Cody Zeller and Steven Adams I want to hit on. So, Cody Zeller has been really disappointing lately, and his minutes have really trended down. Just the last three games, 20, 17, and 19 minutes. Some of that's due to blowout. They did get blown out against Boston, and he only played 19 minutes in that game. I have a feeling Z uh, Zeller's going to be a productive player with this Hornets team when he's on the floor. We never know if he's going to get the minutes. This is a game against the Pelicans that could go small. At 5,400, if you want to take a shot on Zeller, you definitely can. I feel a little bit safer, though, with Steven Adams, and I do like Steven Adams quite a bit today on DraftKings at 5,400. Uh, he has yet to play 30 minutes this season, which is definitely a bit concerning. Uh, some of that has been due to blowouts. Like I feel like he could have gotten to 30 minutes against the Warriors, but they won that game by almost 30 points. He only played 25 minutes in that game. I think some of it's been due to foul trouble as well. I think he's gotten some in, into some early foul trouble sometimes this season. In this matchup against a Warriors team that really struggles to defend bigs, doesn't really have any good defensive bigs, if Steven Adams is going to play close to 30 minutes and only 5,400, I mean, his rebound should definitely be there this season since Russell Westbrook is no longer taking rebounds away. He does have, or the, of the six games he's played this season, Steven Adams does has, have double-digit rebounds in four of the six games. So it's very likely he's able to get a double-double. For 5,400, I really like him on DraftKings today. Uh, people might shy away because he has yet to really do much this season, but at that salary in the matchup against the bad Warriors defense, I do like Steven Adams quite a bit. I think I feel a lot safer rolling him over Cody Zeller, but... Honestly, if you want to take a shot on Zeller, uh, you could definitely look to do so. If he gets 30 minutes, Zeller's going to be a smash play. It's just so hard to predict whether he gets those minutes or not. Uh, so that's probably it for center. We saw, or uh, one thing I want to talk about, Friday night we did see Dwight Powell get pretty good ownership. I mean, he was like 15, 20% owned in single entry double ups on set, or on Friday. People were looking to him. He was really cheap in that matchup with the Knicks. He, he busted as well. I mean, he only played like 20 minutes. I don't think I can go to him even at 4800 I would just feel much safer getting up to Steven Adams for $600 more. So probably won't be looking there. I would love to play Willie Collie Stein at 3900 but we have yet to see him play more than like 20 minutes this season. He did play 24 minutes on Friday night against the Timberwolves in that overtime game. So I guess that's a plus to see his minutes slowly increasing. But until we see him get close to 30 minutes, even at 3900 it's going to be hard to go to Willie Collie Stein just because... It doesn't seem like they're going to fully unleash him yet until he gets more action in. So I think that's probably it for the center position today, guys. I think that's pretty much it for the video. Uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Hopefully it did help you. If you enjoyed, make sure you drop a like down below. I would greatly appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Uh, like always, if you have questions, you can leave any questions, any comments down below in the comment section. I'm always reading your guys' comments, always replying to comments throughout the day. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. As always, I would appreciate that as well. And good luck tonight, guys, on this four-game slate. Thanks for watching. Peace.